Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the channel that talks all things Wentworth. Now, uh, as usual, if this is your first time here, then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you do like these Wentworth videos, then why not share it with a friend? Okay then, guys. Well, we are up to Season 3, Episode 7 of Wentworth, and we are now into the second half of this season, and things are getting super juicy. So we left B. Smith strapped to a bed in the psych ward in the last episode and as soon as this episode begins we witness what B. saw while she had this psychotic episode. B is full on tripping with acid. Everyone around her is bending and changing shapes. She's hallucinating that Will is Harry's killer. And at one point, B even tries to jump at the fence before being restrained by the officers. Bridget plays all of this back to B, you know, the footage to try and jog B's memory. Now, B is adamant that she didn't take any drugs and she definitely doesn't have psychotic episodes. What she does remember is a man grabbing her from behind before the lights went out. Not only that, but B also caught a glimpse of this man's face in a mirror that was in the corridor. Now Bridget thinks that B is being genuine and she goes to Joan about it, but Joan wants to keep B locked in the psych ward for her own safety for the moment. I mean, <laughs> of course this is what Joan wants. There is a scene where B wants to use the bathroom and Bridget persuades Miss Miles and the nurses to unstrap B from the bed but as B is walking out of her room she ends up seeing the man in the mirror and you know she has this little bit of a freak out. Now obviously the drugs were still active in B's system at this stage hence the hallucination. Later on while B is sleeping she ends up having flashbacks to this man in the mirror and she remembers that she actually scratched him with her fingers during the struggle. So later on when Doreen comes to visit B, B wipes the DNA from underneath her fingers. She puts it into a bag and gives it to Doreen to look after until later on. Bridget continues to visit B and you know checks on her throughout the episode and B is sticking of the story of the man attacking her and Bridget doesn't really need any more convincing and she goes back to Joan and pretty much demands that B is ready to be let out of the psych ward because it was the LSD in her system that caused the freak out. But Joan is still not willing to let B out of the psych ward so Bridget tells Joan that she will go to the board and I just loved you know Bridget's backbone in this scene but Joan doesn't budge. However later on Joan goes to visit B in the psych ward and she ends up telling B that if she doesn't forget about this man in the mirror story then she will end up staying in the psych ward for the criminally insane for the rest of her life. Like Wow, that is some serious messed up shit. Imagine being threatened to be locked up in the nut house forever and ever when you're not even crazy. That's literally one of my worst fears and Joan is just so pure evil, but at the same time, I love it. Now, B does forget the man in the mirror story. At least that's what she says to Joan and Bridget and the doctors. And B is then released. And she ends up telling Frankie and Maxine that she never thought that the freak would go this far. And from now on, B is going to play the long game. I forgot to mention that one of the nurses in the psych ward is actually the same actress who will end up playing officer Brenda Murphy from season 4 onwards. Very strange, don't know what was happening there but yeah. Vera is starting to show that she's, you know, slightly starting to turn on Ferguson. Only slightly, but she's not behaving like a puppet so much in this episode. Now, when Bridget first tells Joan about this man in the mirror story, Vera actually questions Joan if she even checked the CCTV footage. And, of course, Joan says, you know, she did and it showed nothing. But uh, later on, Vera goes down to the boiler room area and she's just casually walking 
walking around slowly, checking everything out. And you can see that Vera is deep in thought while she's doing her little explore around. And then Joan appears at the boiler room doorway. Vera makes out that she was just being thorough because B seemed quite adamant. And Joan then becomes very passive aggressive towards Vera. But this is definitely the first time where Vera uses her own initiative. And you know, she doesn't go straight to John Ferguson. And to be pretty, to be pretty much, she's going against Joan. Kim Chang is back in this episode and immediately runs and hugs Frankie in front of Bridget, who is looking very, very jealous. When Kim tries to have some sexy time with Frankie, Frankie ends up pushing Kim away and Kim tells Frankie that she broke parole for her. She missed her and Frankie's just like, I didn't ask you to do that, you're stupid, which it pretty much is to be fair. But Kim knows that Frankie only pushes her away when she has her mind on someone else. And Kim ends up putting two and two together and realizes that it must be Bridget. And I just love the scene where Kim loses her shit. She runs up and jumps onto the fence and she says to Bridget in front of everyone, what's with you and Frankie, eh? Are you fucking? <laughs> It's so funny, I love it. This doesn't go unnoticed though by Vera, who ends up reporting it to Joan, and Vera agrees to keep an eye on things. There is a scene in this episode that I just love, and it's the Frankie confession scene, where Bridget and Frankie, they are having an intense psych session in Bridget's office, and when Bridget delves into Frankie's past, and you know, they start talking about him, um, Frankie starts to lose it and she ends up telling Bridget that she killed Meg Jackson and just breaks down into tears on the floor. It is such an intense moment. I just love it. So powerful and I love the fact that Bridget ends up keeping quiet about all of this. However though, there's always a however, guys. Frankie's worst nightmare is about to happen because Joan Ferguson has planted a tape recorder in Bridget's office. And, uh, oh God, when Joan plays it back, she hears everything. The whole confession on tape. And just look at Joan's face. She is so happy. She is over the moon. This is a serious weapon that Joan has just obtained. And I can remember thinking to myself, oh my God, this is not gonna end well. There is a hilarious scene between Fletcher and Jess, and I know, I know, Jess is really creepy, but I just love this scene where Jess is being taken into the strip search room, and Fletcher starts getting flashbacks to that time when he was when he was having sexy time with Jess, and he completely zones out, and he walks up to the strip search room and opens the door while Jess is just standing there in her underwear, and Linda is like, what are you doing? Shut the door, but guys, look at Jess's face. Her cheeky smile, it literally makes me laugh every single time. Liz is back on the booze in this episode when another magical bottle of booze pops up under Liz's pillow. Who is doing this to Liz? I mean, I know we all know, yeah, but like, let's just pretend we don't for a minute. I can remember thinking, you know, the first time watching it, I thought maybe it was Frankie. And um, anyway, Liz can't resist the temptation and she ends up getting drunk again. And Liz is pretty much her horrible drunk self in the most part of this episode. There is, however, that funny scene where Liz has a right go at Boomer and, you know, she says that she has a fat ass and imitates boomer and there is actually a really lush scene where Frankie finds Liz asleep in B's cell and Frankie decides to put a quilt over her which I just thought was really sweet. Liz seems to think it's boomer leaving the booze under her pillow and Maxine gets really mad at boomer telling boomer that if she sees just one more of these homebrew bottles then boomer is fucked. All of this booze fairy under the pillow stuff is really sending shockwaves and confusion through the prison, but who is doing it? 
Anyway, another brilliant episode, a few dark moments with B being stuck in the psych ward, a brilliant moment between Frankie and Bridget, and I am enjoying seeing Vera you know, starting to go against Ferguson. My favourite part of this episode is definitely Frankie's confession, but my least favourite moment has to be Liz being drunk. I hate it when Liz is drunk, I don't like it when she drinks, she just turns into a horrible, vile character. But now I would like to hear all of your thoughts. What did you think of this episode? Were you shocked at how evil Joan was becoming? And what were your thoughts on that cliffhanger ending with the voice recording? Let me know everything, guys, in the comments box below. Okay then, guys. Well, thank you all for stopping by and watching today's video. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, stay safe out there, and I will see you all again very, very soon.